Hello everybody, it's Osla. Today we're gonna to be going over the three builds that I think won the most out of the latest patch 1.13. The first build that we'll be going over is gonna be centered on Rakshasa's Katana. Rakshasa's Katana at max level gets a B rating in dexterity and does 55 blood loss. Unfortunately, we cannot increase that blood loss. However, the unique skill Wheat Cutter, as you can see, we're destroying Melania with it, is just extremely overpowered and awesome. With enemies the size of Melania, you can easily stun lock them and proc your successive attack talisman, which we do have. To make sure you're getting the same damage that I get, you want to make sure that you're running Millicent's Prosthesis. This gives us plus 5 to Dexterity and also boost successive attack damage up to 11%. If you're in base new game, like this character is, you're also going to want to run the Wing Sword Insignia, which will boost successive attack power by up to 10%. However, if you're in new game plus, I definitely recommend going for the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, which will boost successive attack power by 13%. Now both the Wing Sword Insignia and the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia stack with Millicent's prosthesis. For the other two talismans, you want to make sure you have the Shard of Alexander. This is going to boost the Ash of War damage by 15%. For the last slot, I use a defense talisman, mainly the Dragon Crest Great Shield talisman. This is going to reduce incoming physical damage by 20%. However, you can swap this talisman out depending on the situation. If you're going against an enemy that does a lot of fire damage, you can use a fire negation talisman. If you're going against an enemy that does magic damage, you can use a magic damage negation talisman. Basically, I'm using a fourth talisman slot as a damage negation talisman. And the reason for that is, as you can see, Weed Cutter gets up close and personal with your enemy. Just real quick, I'd like to let you know that after this boss fight, there will be DLC boss fight spoilers. I did put a text overlay to let you know, but I'm letting you know just in case you didn't see that. Now back to this build, the armor set that we're using is the Rakshasa set. We're using the full set. We're getting 2% damage to all damage per piece, and that's another reason why we're using a defense talisman in the last slot. We take increased damage by wearing this set, and we have the full set on. Now going to the Physic. In your Physic, I like to run the Thorny Crack tier, which is going to stack with Millicent's Prosthesis and the Wing Sword Insignias. In the second slot, I like to use the Opaline Hard tier. This is going to reduce all incoming damage by 20%. And each of these tiers are going to last three minutes. Now, if you want to go all damage, there is two things you can change to this build. So instead of using the fourth talisman slot as a defense slot, you can put in the ritual sword talisman if you feel that you can keep at full health. At full health, the ritual sword talisman gives you plus 10% to all damage. Instead of the opening hard tier, you can put in the blood sucking tier. This is going to boost all damage by 20%. However, it is going to drain your HP at about 1.5% per second, I believe. This is using 60 Vigor as a calculation. As you can see from the footage, patch 1.13 came that initial attack of Weed Cutter come out real fast. With 58 poise that we get from the armor, and the hyper armor that you get in the weed cutter. This will shred all bosses without having to worry about too much of the damage that the boss is doing to you, especially with the damage negation that I have for this skill. So let's go ahead and go over the stats. So here's a level 150 stats. We have Scatter Tree Blessing 13, 60 Vigor, 15 Mind, 25 Endurance, 12 Strength, 75 Dexterity, we get 5 from Millicent's Prosthesis, 25 Faith, Base Intelligence and Arcane, 
For min maxing, I recommend that you use the Prophet as your starting class. For buffs, we have Blessings Boon, Golden Vow, and Flame Grant Me Strength. Let's take a look at the equipment. The main weapon will be Rakshasa's Great Katana at plus 10. We get a B rating and Dexterity and 55 Blood Loss buildup. You can use any seal. I'm using the Dragon Communion seal. However, I'm not using any incantations. We have the full Rakshasa set, giving us 2% to all damage per piece. And giving us a healthy 58 poise. For Talismans, we have the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. But as I said earlier, this is going to be our defense talisman slot, so you can use any defense talisman that you'd like. We have Millicent's Prosthesis, which gives us plus 5 dexterity and boosts successive attack power. Wing Sword Insignia. If you're in New Game Plus, I recommend getting the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, which again boosts successive attack power. We have the Shard of Alexander for plus 15% damage to our Ash of War, the unique skill Weed Cutter. And in the Physic, we have the Opaline Heart tier and the Thorny Crack tier. The Thorny Crack tier, Millicent's Prosthesis, and both of the Sword Insignias all synergize really well and go great with this build. Now the next winner of patch 1.13 is going to be the Euphoria. Especially the unique skill Euphoria Vortex. Now before the patch, it took about 20 hits to build up luster, maximum luster that is, on the weapon to be able to use the full damage of the skill. However, with patch 1.13, I believe it only takes about 10 hits. Not only does it take a decreased number of hits to build up full luster, but the rate of decay has also slowed down, which means you don't have to keep the pressure up as much to get to that full max level to unleash the full force of Euphoria. And as you can see, I'm going for all damage on this build, and again, we're using the full Rakshasa set, which is giving us 2% to all damage per piece worn. But again, this does increase the damage that we're taking. Now seeing as how you can't just spam the Ash War with this weapon, we're going to be using Talismans that help us with our light attacks and heavy attacks. I will be using the two-handed sword talisman which boosts all two-handed damage whether they're light attacks or heavy attacks by 15%. Also I'm going to be using Millicent's prosthesis which again gives us plus five dexterity. For this weapon I went all into faith and just met the minimum requirements for the weapon. With Millicent's Prosthesis and the plus 5 Dexterity, you actually only need 11 Dexterity because with the Talisman, you're going to get up to 16. For the third Talisman, we're using the Sacred Scorpion Charm, which is going to give us plus 12% to all holy damage. However, this is going to lower our damage negation by 10%. And for the last Talisman, we have the Shard of Alexander, which is going to boost Euphoria Vortex by 15%. Seeing as how we have 80 Faith, you have access to almost any Faith-based incantations. Also for buffs, I'm using Golden Bow, and I'm not using Flame Grant and Strength, because this weapon does split holy damage. And I'm not using Howl Shabriri, because I'm already taking extra damage from the armor. And since this weapon does mostly holy damage based on our stat location, I went with the Sword of Light. And I'm using the unique skill Light, which for 60 seconds is going to increase all holy damage by 20%. After this fight with Romina, we're going to go over the level 150 stats and all the equipment. So here's our level 150 stats. Again, we have a Scatter Tree Blessing of 13, 60 Vigor, 19 Mind, 26 Endurance, 16 Strength, 11 Dexterity, we're getting 5 for Millicent's Prosthesis, 80 Faith, Base Intelligence and Arcane. Again, this is a Prophet starting class. For buffs, I'm using Blessings Boon, Golden Vow, 
and I'm using the unique skill light from the Sword of Light. We have a Euporia at plus 10. We have the Sword of Light. It doesn't have to be upgraded. Again, we're just using the unique skill light for the body buff. If you don't want to use this skill though, you can use Howl Shabriri. But we're already receiving extra damage from the armor and from the Scorpion Charm. We have Urtree Seal at plus 10 with 353 incant scaling. Again, you can use pretty much any faith-based incantation. We have the full Rakshasa set. This is going to give us plus 2% damage per piece to all damage and 58 poise. We have a two-handed sword talisman, sacred scorpion charm. And again, the two-handed sword talisman gives us plus 15% damage to all two-handed light and heavy attacks. Sacred scorpion charm gives us plus 12% to all holy damage. Millicent's Prosthesis, which boosts our successive attacks and gives us plus 5 dexterity. We have the Shard of Alexander for plus 15% to the unique skill Euporia Vortex. And in the Physic, we have the Spike Crack tier and the Holy Shrouding Crack tier. If you don't want to use the Spike Crack tier, you can also swap in the Thorny Crack tier, which will stack with Millicent's Prosthesis. Now the last weapon that we're going to go over that got buffed by patch 1.13 is going to be the Red Bear's Claws. Specifically the unique skill Red Bear Hunt. For only 8 FP per input, your character does a slash attack, which has a lingering hitbox which can also damage your enemy. Now I believe the lingering hitbox does physical damage, I haven't done complete testing on it, but if you can pull off the full combo. For 32 FP, you can do approximately 30 stance damage. Now I'm not saying this is a stance breaking weapon. However, 30 stance damage is pretty good for a weapon skill. Now the buff that this received from patch 1.13 is that it increased the hyper armor, which means that you will have less likely of a chance to get staggered out of doing the skill. This doesn't mean that you will not get staggered out of the skill, but what was already a good skill has quickly become a great skill. Now as you see on screen, we're again featuring Rakshasa's almost full set. We're going with the chest piece, the gauntlets, and the griefs. This is going to give us plus 2% to all damage per piece worn. For the helmet, we went with the white mask. This is going to give us plus 10% to all damage when blood loss occurs. This lasts for 20 seconds and it stacks with one of the talismans that we're using. The Lord of Blood's Exaltation. The Lord of Blood's Exaltation gives us plus 20% to all damage when blood loss occurs. This also lasts for 20 seconds, but it stacks with the white mask. Unfortunately, the blood loss cannot be increased on this weapon since it's not infusible and you cannot buff it. However, as you can see right there, we just got a bleed proc. So for the rest of the talismans, I have the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, which is going to boost successive attack powers up to 13%. We have the Shard of Alexander, which is going to boost the weapon skill damage by 15%. In the last slot, especially since this is a very short ranged weapon, we have a defense talisman. Currently, I have the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, which is going to raise our physical damage negation by 20%. And in the physics, we're running the Phony Crack tier, which boosts successive attack power and stacks with the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. And the Opal Wing Hard tier, which is also going to raise our damage negation by 20% from all sources. Now we have one more boss fight with this weapon. It's going to be against Rolana. And the reason why I did two DLC boss fights with this weapon was again to show just how good the hyper armor is on this weapon. As you can see, we're taking a bunch of Rolana's attacks. And again, since this is an up close and personal weapon, it's exactly why I have a defense talisman and the opening hard tier. So this weapon, the Euphoria, and with Shasta's Great Katana, these are definitely the winners of patch 1.13. But I'd like to know what you think. 
what do you think the winners of 1.13 were? What do you think about these builds that I made around these weapons that got buffed? Let me know down in the comments. So let's go ahead and go over the level 150 stats. We're at Scatter Tree Blessing 13. We have 60 Vigor, 70 Mind, 30 Endurance, 70 Strength, 25 Faith. Dexterity, Intelligence, and Arcane are at base. We use the Prophet as a starting class for min-maxing. For buffs, we have Blessings Boon, Golden Vow, and Flame Grant Me Strength. Let's go ahead and take a look at the equipment. We're using the Red Bear's Claw at plus 10. For the seal, we're going to be using the Claw Mark seal at preferably plus 25. But even at plus 24, you get a 248 incant scaling. This is going to give you access to plenty of incantations. And if you include the faith tier, you can use even more incantations. We have the white mask. Again, this is going to boost our damage when blood loss occurs by 10%. For 20 seconds, we have Rakshasa set for the rest of the armor, giving us 2% damage per piece. We also are taking a little bit more damage by using it, and we have 54 poise. We have the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman for damage mitigation. However, you can use any defense talisman that you prefer, depending on the boss. We have the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, which is going to stack with the White Mask. This is going to give us 20% to all damage for 20 seconds when blood loss occurs. Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. This is going to boost our successive attack power by up to 13%. Shard of Alexander, which is going to boost our weapon skill by 15%. And in the Physic, we have the Opaline Hard tier for defense and the Thorny Crack tier. So let me know what you all think. If you haven't, please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye!